Welcome to the R video tutorial on Quant Mod in R Part 6. And this one we're going to look at more than one stock. Now, this doesn't necessarily rely on the three before this that work on bootstrapping. Here we're just going to go try to go out, grab a bunch of stocks, and package them together in sort of a portfolio that we can then use. Hopefully, this will work quite well. Uh, so, we're going to give it a go. So, uh, we've already installed the Quant Mod package in a different uh tutorial so now we can just load the package because i have a fresh instance of our going and get all the tools from there that i'm going to need okay and there's my warning that it gives me and then eventually it'll go away once everything's set now the next thing i need to do is i need to create a file or a vector here not a file a vector that is text and it contains the ticker symbols that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in Apple, Google, Target, Amazon, and TM is Toyota Motors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to read each of these in, grab the column that I want, and bind them together. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do, and there's several ways to do this. There's probably a lot more efficient ways, but what I'm trying to do is also reinforce basic programming skills. So if you go, oh, why didn't you use this crazy apply function or something? The reason I didn't is because I didn't want to. I'm trying to do basic programming as well as learning about these other tools that you can use in R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this ticker, put that in my working environment. You can see it popped up over there. Now here's the code that I had from last time, and I'm going to want to reuse this code uh, in a very specific way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep, I'm going to call this uh, Portfolio 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this for the first time. Set this up. Um, I'm going to no longer put in here Google. I'm going to put in here Ticker 1. And then I'm going to take the first one, which happens to be Apple. And that will read in Apple for me, and it'll put it in stock one. Now I'm going to get rid of this stock one at the moment. Okay, so what this is going to do is this kind of initializes the portfolio. So let's put a comment about that. Okay, now that we've got this initialized, when we run it, it will have Apple in it for us. So, and we're going to keep adding to Portfolio 1, by the way. But Portfolio 1 doesn't actually have everything I want. So I'm going to actually have Portfolio 2 as well. So I'm going to put in here Portfolio, if I can spell it correctly. Low. Boy, I can't spell today. 2. And it's going to be Portfolio 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a specific column that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in all of it. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to Portfolio 1, look at it really quick. And the only one I'm really interested in is this close column. And notice it has AAPL.close on it. And that's going to be a problem later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off. Okay, I'm going to just grab this column, no matter what security it is, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind them together so where each column corresponds to the returns for the stock that I'm interested in. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do, or the next thing I'm going to do is grab this. I'm going to do, it was the fourth column if you remember. So this will grab the fourth column for me. And now I will have that. And then I'm going to make portfolio... Again, I can't spell, which will be my monthly returns for these. And actually, for this one, I want to do weekly returns. Why weekly? Because lots of people can't think in monthly or they get sort of worried. So let's just do weekly return of Portfolio 2. Okay, now this is the process I want to repeat over and over again for each one that's in my portfolio or my list of tickers, symbols. So I'm going to iterate through them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this. Let's see. We should probably comment this before we copy it. Oop, made a mistake. Sometimes you make them. Go to undo. All right, so let's comment this thing. So what did we do? We grabbed the close price 
That's what we grabbed off there, and then we turned it into returns. All right, so now I'm set. This is what I want to do. I want to repeat this over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So while we're doing this, we're going to copy and paste this, and we're going to put it in a loop. And uh, if you're not familiar with loops, uh, there's videos that you can go back and look on it. Uh, the previous three videos use loops as well for bootstrapping. Here, we're not going to be doing bootstrapping. We're simply going to be attaching more variables or more stocks to what we're interested in. So that we're going to have a matrix or a data frame that we'll have for each column will be the returns for each stock. All right, so we can do this here real quick. So we're going to do four. I'm going to use I in one, and I'm going to use the length of ticker one. Why am I using length instead of actually specifying the value? Well, if I don't know the length of the ticker, or if I constantly change it, this will automatically adapt to it, so I don't have to do it again. Okay, so I've opened my loop. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to close my loop. Now that my loop is closed, I'm going to indent things. By indenting, what you do is you make your code a little bit easier to read. Okay, now I'm going to change this one to an I. Okay, I grab the pr close price. I have portfolio three, and I'm going to call this portfolio three A at the moment because it's a placeholder. Then what I'm going to do is portfolio three. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to C bind portfolio three. So all the ones that I have before, as well as portfolio three A. Okay. And you'll see what this does. We'll, we'll put them together. But basically what this does is it glues them together across columns. So I'm going to put glue the new column onto the data set. Okay, so that's what that's going to do for us. So they'll glue them together and we can see what this produces. Now what it should do is go through all the tickers for me and I shouldn't have to actually think about it. So I've already ran this. I'm going to run all of this all at once, which is kind of dangerous because you really should run it a little bit one at a time or slower. Okay, so I'm going to run this and it didn't blow up. That's good. So what I was interested in is portfolio three. Here it is. So I'm going to open it up. And what do I get? I have columns, weekly returns, weekly returns one, weekly returns two, weekly returns three, weekly returns four, weekly returns five. So I do have five columns, which is really, really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and rename all of the columns here. And that's really easy to do on R using the names function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do names portfolio three, and that's going to be the ticker. Okay, that is a vector of names that I can put on this thing. So if I run this, it will modify portfolio three. Uh, it says dim names do not equal an array extent. So this should have worked. Uh, did it work? Nope. Did not work for some reason, even though it's the right length. Oh, wait. No, it's not. Here's the problem. I started at 2. I started at 1. I needed to start at 2. Now it will work. See, this is how you program sometimes. You have to learn to debug. When things don't work, you go back and you check them. Okay? So now this should work. I'm going to run it all again, all the way from up here, so everything gets reinitialized. Run it. And now it didn't throw an error. And it shouldn't have thrown in there because now everything should match. Okay. Now I have Apple, Google, Target, Amazon, and uh, Toyota Motors. They're all here. These are all the returns for all of these. These are the weekly returns. So now I have a portfolio that I can use. And if I want to, I could plot them all at the same time. 
uh, and get some Technicolor picture. But what I'm really interested in is just, at first, building this portfolio. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll play with the portfolio, learn how to get some means out of it, and then maybe some covariances. Because if people want to do portfolio optimization, hopefully we can work our videos along the way to get to portfolio optimization. All right, now we have a portfolio. We have the returns. Now all we need to do is use the tools for portfolio optimization and just portfolio management in general, and we can learn a lot about what we have going on. All right, so we'll leave that to the next video. So see you there. Uh -huh.